Hello and welcome to this January 18th Go No Go show here on Stock Charts TV. My name is Tyler Wood. I'm a CMT charter holder. And today, as always, I am joined by the illustrious, the indefatigable Alex Cole. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I don't know what to say after that. I mean, I can't say I'm a little tired or, you know, I'm, I, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> over, over promise, under deliver every time. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, on this weekly show. Uh, we like to talk trends. We like to talk at a high level first and work our way down in the way that Alex and I have learned from some of the best research analysts on Wall Street over the last 20 years. Alex, why don't we start with our cross asset heat map? just to get a sense of the overall market environment that we are all trading in. Yes, and so we are seeing some structural change, right? So we've got equities in a go trend, okay, but we did see some weakness earlier this week, and you, that top panel is painting aqua bars. Treasury bond prices showing some go fish, right? So we were in a go trend, now we're showing a go fish bar. Remember, the go fish is our bar of uncertainty, meaning that n there's not enough criteria being met either to paint go bars or no go bars. We're seeing some uncertainty in the markets. Commodities staying in that no go trend, but painting weak pink bars and the dollar down the bottom quite interesting because we're seeing several amber bars there as well. So some uncertainty, perhaps some change. Uh, we're not sure which way things will go. That's why we just pay attention and don't try to predict. Absolutely. Some trends cooling off, uh, certainly cooling off in my neck of the woods, Alex, uh, uh, below zero every single day. And uh, we're, we're certainly seeing some areas of the market heat up a little bit. Let's take a look, first and foremost, at the S&P 500, uh, just to get a sense of uh, large cap equities in the United States. A uh, couple of uh, heavier days, some weakness uh, in that go trend, uh, painting those uh, aqua bars. Talk to us a little bit about uh, about what's happening from a trend perspective as we uh, as we peek out and uh, look at that zero line on the go no go oscillator for some support. Yeah, and this is what we're looking at here. The trend is certainly in place, right? We are still painting go bars, and if this holds, then this is a slightly higher low, right? Just after we made a slightly higher high. But what I've highlighted on here is that there is some bearish divergence. We're seeing lower highs on the oscillator as it falls to test the zero line again. So. This is going to be critical now. Does it find support at zero? If we can find support at the zero line, rally back into positive territory, we'll be able to confidently say that momentum is resurgent in the direction of the go trend, and we'll expect then an attempt at a new higher high. If the oscillator fails to find the support at zero and breaks into negative territory, then we'd have momentum out of step with the trend. We'd be seeing some negative momentum, some oversold conditions, or even while the indicator is painting these aqua go bars. So we'd love to see support here at zero for the oscillator. You know, I see you uh, drawing those dashed uh, lines to highlight the divergence between price and momentum. And one of the core concepts in technical analysis, foundational uh, in the CMT curriculum is this idea of divergence. And we could be using any number of indicators uh, to reference whether the activity in price action is being confirmed or if it is diverging from that price activity uh, in our lower panel indicators. And so whatever momentum indicators you're using, uh, if, you're, if you're looking at go-to-go -no -go charts, you can use the go-to-go -no -go oscillator in the exact same way that you would an RSI or a rate of change or a uh, commodity channel index, you name it. What we're seeing there is that as price is making a higher high, series of higher highs, our momentum oscillator is making a series of lower highs, meaning there is less enthusiasm at these ever higher price points for the S&P 500. And that divergence is not a, um, it's not an infallible indication. Uh, we don't, uh, we, we can often see divergences that don't resolve to the downside. But what it's telling us is there is less investor enthusiasm at these ever higher price points uh, where we're seeing momentum not quite reach back up to those uh, levels of four, five, and six on the go -no go oscillator. Uh, I've also noted, Alex, that uh, volume has lightened up uh, in this last little rally and pullback. Uh, we're seeing that green line in the go-no-go -no -go oscillator in the lower panel. When it's blue, we're seeing heavy relative volume. Uh, here, this is showing us that, uh, that volume is lightening up. So something to keep an eye on here, uh, certainly not as constructive 
as uh, what we were seeing in uh, in December, where um, where we had that uh, very strong rally. Let's let's break this out to a weekly basis as well, Alex, just to uh, get a little sense of the longer term trend and what we're seeing in a similar divergence. Yeah, I mean, you can still see these lines on here. They don't really, um, not really big enough to to make sense to put them on a weekly chart like this. But you can see what we're talking about. We are at these highs, which is uh, right about uh, consolidating just above where we were in 2021. So that's good. We've set a new higher high, uh, but it's just sort of the the nature of things, right? For some sort of consolidation now after this new all-time high. So not really surprising, but trend strength, very good. We're seeing strong blue go bars, even as price moves sideways for a few weeks and the oscillator well above zero at a value of three. So in positive territory, no longer overbought. So um, if the daily chart can hold, that'll be a, a sign of continued uh, trend strength. Absolutely. Now we talked about some of those macro uh, uh, asset class charts that were uh, giving us some context for where we're trading. Let's take a look at the TNX, the 10-year treasury yield of, uh, of U.S. government bonds. And uh, we, we've seen bond buying selling off, right? Tapering from those uh, go trends. And here we're seeing rates strike a new go trend, moving inversely to uh, to bond prices. Talk to us a little bit about what's happening in rates here, Alex. Yeah, this is a this is a nasty looking chart, right? Because um, it wasn't able to continue with the trend that we we identified last week. So we've had uh, obviously higher highs over the course of the last few years, and a really nice um, sort of give back in terms of we saw these highs, we saw the counter trend correction arrows come in. And we saw rates cool quite nicely. Uh, and then, of course, we turned our eye to the zero line looking for support. And it didn't really find it. It's, it rode the zero line for a while, broke through into negative territory. And, of course, several weeks of amber bars then were followed by this no-go. Now, on this quick return of the oscillator back towards the zero line, we, like you said, we're seeing a new go. Now, with the oscillator in negative territory, we're not going to be too convinced that this go trend is is here to stay. We're going to watch to see if the oscillator, uh, what happens as it approaches the zero line again, if it finds it as resistance and gets turned away, this go trend might be very short lived. Absolutely. And these are weekly bars that we're looking weekly at bars, here yeah. on the TNX. Uh, so this week's rally uh, coinciding with a uh, an equity uh, heaviness, not, yeah. not exactly a, a, a sharp sell off, but a correction to the S&P 500. If you take a look at this on the daily basis, uh, that no-go trend still in place, but on weaker pink bars. Yep. And most importantly, as you're highlighting, Alex, the uh, the going to go oscillator broke above zero, came back to retest that uh, neutral level and has resumed in the upward direction uh, here on the daily basis. Yep. Positive, enthusiastic uh, uh, momentum for 10-year uh, treasury yield. So uh, perhaps... <laughs> we will see a trend change here on the daily chart of the TNX uh, with if that positive momentum is persistent. Now let's move on from, uh, from the bond market. Let's take a look at the US dollar, noting another cooling of what was a, uh, a pretty strong no-go trend. Uh, we saw negative momentum right below the zero line coming back to retest and being rejected uh, for it back down as those trend continuation icons appeared on the price panel of the chart. Now we saw this week, the break through the zero line into positive territory and a trend shift from no go into go fish amber bars. So that uh, that neutrality being its own indication when there isn't enough uh, weight of the evidence in that blended trend model to, to tell us yet that the US dollar is uh, back into a go trend. There's still some uncertainty and, and neutral readings from the trend model. Uh, Alex, any observations you have here about uh, where we're at with that resistance area? Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of keeping the chart fairly unobstructed. And what pops out here for me is that we're at a level that could well be resistance here. So we'll keep an eye on that. And if we don't progress to go bars and we find resistance here, then we will most likely return to paint no go bars, at least for the uh, the foreseeable future. So We'll definitely be watching this level because that looks like an area that was resistance before and also support. Of course, that's the concept of polarity. 
uh, what once was support becomes resistance and so forth. So we're going to watch to see what happens here. Um, but positive momentum, okay? So definitely out of out of odds with what's happening with the trend. So we saw that now on both the rates chart and the dollar. And that's uh, that's consistent through uh, through the first couple of weeks of trading here in 2024, uh, strengthening conditions in the U.S. dollar, uh, some strengthening conditions in the uh, U.S. Treasury rates. Let's move on, Alex. Let's take a look at gold, GLD being the ticker symbol for our uh, ETF proxy of gold. Talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing here from a trend perspective. Still trying, right? We've been talking about, uh, I don't quite know what this arrow is doing here, but still trying and to hold on to this go trend but we talked about this i think last week how we were checking with the zero line to see if this would provide support and it really didn't so uh, we've seen some amber bars we've seen it try to come back to goes we've seen another amber bar and now a go trend to go bar again but definitely now finding resistance at the zero line so uh you tell me, Tyler, this looks pretty choppy and uncertain to me. We all know that the gold chart, we're trying to break out to those long-term decade, decade-long highs that'll give us some sort of resolution to the upside. Still struggling to do that, uh, mm -hmm. as you can see here on the right side of the chart. Uh, I think it's uh, it's said and reset and reset on the Go No Go Charts show. Uh, we, we try to stick to trading rules rather than predicting what, what could or might or should happen in markets. Yep. Uh, I think our, our good friend Walter Deemer told us uh, markets are here and devised to embarrass the greatest number of people as possible at any yeah, given time. Yeah. Uh, and, and we definitely have seen that time and time again, uh, particularly in these last few years where uh, all investors, lots of research analysts talking about key levels and uh, clear expectations of markets doing something. I think it's important to recognize that uh, markets can move in three directions, right? We can be trending upward trending downward or trending sideways, which is a very frustrating, sloppy, choppy uh, market environment to be trading in. Uh, we're going to take a look at some charts here at the end of uh, today's show that are definitely not in areas of ambiguity or neutrality, but uh, but very clear trends. This one here at Gold seems to be uh, just tap dancing around those uh, resistance levels and uh, perhaps could continue for some yep. time. All right, let's uh, let's switch over to our global equities realm map. When we were talking about the S and P five hundred uh, just a moment ago, uh, we're seeing uh, perhaps a consolidation above those all time highs. Uh, one of the things that we've talked about repeatedly on this show is uh, keeping an open mind, keeping a, a broad based perspective for opportunities to invest uh, not just in our home country uh, but even uh, abroad as well. A lot of those trends uh, through the end of 2023, we saw uh, emerging markets or developed markets, XUS, uh, outperforming the S&P 500. Uh, and indeed, recently we have seen those uh, relationships change. A rollover in the relative strength of these other equity markets against the US uh, equities, S&P 500. Uh, we're seeing the US back in the lead. Uh, everywhere except uh, perhaps in India, maybe uh, trying trying its best to hold on. Um, but uh, we want to keep an eye on these global equity relationships, make sure we understand allocation opportunities outside the U.S. should these uh, situations change. But right now, a heat map like this is telling us that uh, investors are getting rewarded uh, for staying in U.S. equities. Yeah. Excellent. Let's uh, let's change our tactic for just a minute. Uh, we often talk about the S&P 500. Uh, last night on the radio, I heard uh, I heard it quoted that the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 139 points. First of all, I found it fascinating that they were quoting things in points. Uh, I guess it sounds more sensational to hear a large point drop, uh, less than 1%. Uh, but let's take a look at the Dow Jones, the uh, uh, dollar sign INDU here on stock charts. You know, it's, the, uh, it's funny that you should say that because I heard the same thing on the radio yesterday and thought the same thing. <laughs> I thought, what good is it to me in points? But um, but then I did remember that a lot of the a lot of these sort of the people that those are the markets they trade. They they think about it sometimes mm -hmm. like that because they know what that means. They know what that uh, that sort of size of drop or gain means to them because they've been looking at it for so long. But yeah, I thought the exact same thing. Give me a percentage. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> a little generational difference, right? A lot of us, uh, at least for the last 25 years, the S&P 500 has been the, the dominant U.S. equity index. Uh, a lot of folks have uh, even considered the, the NASDAQ really as the pillar of health for U.S. equities, uh, heavily dominated by the technology sector. Dow Jones Industrial Average, just 30 stocks, uh, 37,000 points and, and climbing. But... Let's take a look at this uh, as as we are looking at equities in the U.S. Uh, a little more danger here in the Dow than we saw mm -hmm. in the S&P 500 with that break below the zero line for the go no go oscillator. Alex, yeah. talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing here and uh, maybe areas of support further down on the chart. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you you were saying. A little bit more of a concern. We, we tried to find support several times. We did and then we didn't. And we broke through into negative territory coinciding with some weakness. You see the aqua bars here <clears throat> on the trend chart, um, but some perhaps some support here at these prior lows. So moving sideways, uh, we'd love to see the oscillator regain positive territory and be back supporting the trend that we're seeing in the price panel. But really, if you're going to look at this chart, you see the strength of the run we had into the end of the year. Not really surprising to see the counter trend correction arrows and then some sideways movement. So um, we, of course, we have to see if the oscillator can recover and get back above zero, but go trend still in place, but a little tenuous. Yeah. Uh, be careful when you're listening to headlines about hundreds of points off the Dow 30. Uh, we, we don't want to over sensationalize that this is a, a contraction in an otherwise uh, upward trend, even on, yeah. even on weakness. Uh, but Alex, as we were talking before the show, right, you could own all of the Dow 30, or you could get uh, into individual names. And I think investors who are uh, thinking about stock picking, even if your universe is just uh, blue chip, large cap uh, American companies, there's still a lot of differentiation under the hood. So let's go through a few charts uh, mm -hmm. of things that, that perhaps are in no-goes uh, yeah. and pulling this, uh, this Dow downward. Let's take a look at Nike. Yeah. I mean, just to your point, you, you could be in... Um, in everything, but you'd be better off not being in the ones that are going down, right? So within that group of 30, some are going up and some are actually going down, which I think some people would be surprised about. Also, what I'd like to point out is that sometimes, you know, you see something like this and you think, oh, you know, um, it should I already, should I get out now? It's already dropped. It's probably, you know, but you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And the no goes continue to move down with lower lows and lower highs. So you know, even though you gave back some on this gap, being out of this security um, and in the ones that are moving up is going to be uh, better for sure, right? So now we're seeing strong no-go bars, oscillator in negative territory at a value of four. So certainly not looking too good for Nike. Alex, let's uh, just take a look at that on a weekly basis for a second. Uh, if, for those of you who are in the CMT program and we, we talk about these bearish engulfing candles you can just zoom in right on that on that big drop on the right hand yeah, side yeah yeah uh, absolutely our good friend david cox uh portfolio manager up in waterloo ontario at a recent seminar was was talking about how you know there are all sorts of indicators lots of different rules uh lots of ways that we can systematize our process um but when we see a major market move a a a candle that is eclipsing the last two weeks of trading activity, or last three uh, nearly, uh, we know something important has happened. So there's there's a, a common sense element for a lot of portfolio managers out there that uh, when something like this happens, even if they don't fully understand yet what, what's going on behind the scenes, maybe there's a, a lawsuit with a prominent athlete, spokesperson for Nike, who knows, right? We often know in hindsight, but when that kind of trading activity happens in a week that's down so heavily, um, as David said, we're, we're selling even even without knowing why, right? right, right. And I think the, uh, the the powerful message here is that something's happening in the market. None of us know what the right side of the chart is, but I think you're identifying, Alex, that there's a behavioral impulse yeah. where you know where something like Nike has dropped twenty percent. You think, oh, I gotta I gotta hold on. Now I'm now I'm down twenty percent, and uh, I gotta make that back. Right. Well. Uh, Typically, big moves uh, precede some additional understanding of, of the news and additional investors can catch up. Uh, so we, we sell out of no-go trends no matter what uh, in order to uh, protect from that further downside risk. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Great example there. Uh, sharp move. I, I couldn't even tell you exactly what caused it, um, but we can see that uh, it was a break of trend. And so they even did, on those, they decided neutral, not to uh, not to sign me after all. Oh, they decided not to sign Alex Cole, and the world was so upset that he's not going to be the new spokesperson for their tennis shoes. That's right. Uh, on another episode, we should talk about your tennis career, Alex. I, th I think folks would really like to learn about that. All right, let's pull up a next chart. Boeing. Uh, I, 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 I do not look forward to all the travel that is coming up in the next few weeks, given the number of news stories about doors falling off mid-flight. Uh, but let's let's just talk a little bit about what the chart is telling us, not about yep. uh, product defaults here from Boeing. Yeah, well, same thing. You know, you you've had this correction from the high. You got notified that we may struggle in the short term by the counter trend correction arrow. Then it progressed through amber bars and into a no go. Um, and, you know, at, at that point, you've had several indications that this go trend in Boeing is probably over. And, you know, of course, as well as that, we had the break below zero on the oscillator. Mm -hmm. So um, three, four, five reasons to no longer be holding Boeing by the time the no go hits. And then, of course, now we've moved lower. So getting out of Boeing at any point until, you know, down to here, which would be the lowest. Uh, is still saved you some more drops in Boeing and left you in the securities in the Dow Jones that are still in go trends. Absolutely. It, important to follow those rules and that break below the zero line, uh, using the full suite of go to go tools and seeing what's happening from a momentum perspective, it's a powerful leading indicator of uh, where trend might be headed. Let's do another one. Let's take a look at Apple. Uh, yeah. Poor folks, you know? world's largest company and then embroiled in lawsuits. <laughs> we, we don't have to feel too bad for Apple. Talk to us about what's happening from a trend perspective here. Yeah, well, this one's actually really interesting because again, same principles apply. You're in, you're in it when it's in a go trend and then you get out because you don't know what's going to happen on the right side of the chart. All you know is we've seen weakening in the trend. We've seen a breakout of a max go, no go squeeze into negative territory. We've seen a change with the amber bar and then a no-go, right? So we've had all of the steps to tell us that there should be no more reason for being long Apple. What's mm -hmm. interesting with Apple is that we've rallied back to test this level now twice. The first time we got rejected, as you can see here, and now we're right back at it. And we're right back at this level, this horizontal level that has clearly been some uh, support before and some resistance, of course, again, um, as I said previously. So very interesting at the moment for Apple because uh, if it is able to get up here above this resistance level, the oscillator will be back above zero. We're then going to be looking for it to close the gap and we'll look to this level as the next level of possible resistance. So Apple looks to be trying to reverse things a little bit more than the other two we looked at. Absolutely. And uh, we know that polarity principle is really powerful for having a clear level to trade against uh, should we break above it? Uh, that's a clear area of support and good risk management uh, would help us stay out of the trade if we were to break back below. Let's do uh, let's do a couple others, right? So instead of owning the entire Dow, we don't want to own those in no-go trends. Uh, what would we be holding? Let's take a look at Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot, of course, you know, the opposite. Home Depot currently at new highs. Home Depot found support at the zero line after a period of weakness that was pulled out by the counter trend correction arrow. And then, of course, when we broke out of the squeeze into positive territory, that signals trend continuation for us. So go trend in place for Home Depot. We've had new highs. Uh, we do have some uh, max uh, momentum readings from the oscillator, which is giving us a counter trend correction arrow. That tells us in the short term we may struggle to go higher. But we are at highs. Uh, we'd look for these levels to be support, strong go bars. Happy to be holding Home Depot at the moment. Absolutely. Let's take a look at McDonald's real quick. MCB. It's yeah, not a McDonald's. recommendation of where you should get your lunch, but uh, what a what an interesting looking chart, huh, Alex? Yeah, and this one's very, very, very interesting because of where we're at, obviously, with the oscillator and the zero line. So we're in a go trend. We're seeing some sideways movements, some struggles to go higher, as we would imagine from these counter trend correction arrows. And then the oscillator's fallen to and been riding the zero line now for several bars, causing the grid of the go no go squeeze to rise to its max. So really exaggerated, reduced volatility for a prolonged period of time as the price movement has shrunk. 
and we can now look to see in which direction this squeeze is broken. If it's broken into positive territory, then what do we see? We're seeing support then at zero again. We'd see trend continuation and we'd look for price to make a new high. If it breaks below zero out of the max go no go squeeze, then we would consider that to be uh, more concerning because we know that momentum should stay on the side of the trend. So that may be your leading indication to lessen your position if you were holding one in, Mac in McDonald's, but um, a, a different chart here, yeah. We're, we're going to talk about the critical importance of, uh, of that go no go squeeze and volatility compression here in just a second. Let's take one more look. Uh, Visa with a V. Yeah, Visa, good chart as well. I mean, we aren't even really seeing so much of a slowdown in Visa. We're seeing a strong trend in place. We saw the sideways movement, which we often see. You know, Tyler, I love this. I talk about it all the time. I like to see a clustering of continuation icons because often that sets up for a new move. So if the oscillator is able to find support repeatedly as price moves sideways, as price consolidates, then often that uh, that leads to good things. So a clustering of go trend continuation icons and then a nice strong move to new highs for Visa. And let's just pop that to a weekly basis as well because uh, we're seeing – just the just the early innings, right? Of a, a fresh breakout of a consolidation area, strong momentum, strong blue go bars. Uh, so, for the closet indexers out there, uh, this may be the environment where we don't see the top level indices improving in the same way that we saw in uh, in December of last year. Uh, it may be a stock picker's paradise where you need to find some differentiation, need to get a little more concentrated in those positions that are working. Uh, Alex, before we wrap up today's show, and I know uh, people have stuck with us already for almost a half an hour, let's do, as we always do, a, a quick look at uh, the S&P 500. But under the hood, let's look at those sector relationships against the benchmark and uh, and just see what what is back in leadership and what was... Uh, perhaps a little bit of Groundhog's Day or deja vu or uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're starting to see those relationships change once again. Uh, things that had been working in the first couple of weeks of the trading year. Uh, we saw some dominant uh, cyclical sector leadership in terms of uh, financials and industrials and even materials leading the S&P 500. Uh, while there was corresponding weakness in information technology, consumer discretionary and communications, uh, it, it appears we are rotating back again, uh, some fresh go trend, uh, relative outperformance for the information technology sector. We're also still seeing uh, communications lead and we're seeing that rollover uh, financials now neutral with a rising S&P 500 uh, and industrials and materials uh, back into strong no go trends. We even saw real estate uh, roll over heavily. Uh, interesting to see healthcare holding on to uh, a weak go trend relative to the S&P. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the last couple of weeks shows looking at uh, biotech stocks. But Alex, let's do as we often do. If the XLK is uh, resuming a leadership position, let's take a yeah. look at the industry groups that are bringing that higher. Um, I don't think we're going to surprise anybody here in uh, just a second when we pull up this heat map. Uh, same process. We're looking at the relative relationship here. It was sectors against the benchmark. Now we're going to look at the industry groups against that leading sector. And uh, within information technology, strongest outperformance is coming from the semiconductors industry group. Uh, we can uh, we can talk for days about uh, software, semiconductors, and even uh, in internet names. Uh, the race to uh, to the top for NVIDIA and for all of these companies that are fueling the AI revolution is uh, is strong and well. Um, Alex, why don't we, we slip back to a basic go no go chart? And let's just pull up the SOX uh, index, the SOXX. Yeah, another, I mean, another great one, right? Uh, hopefully, uh, not hopefully, we don't hope, but I'm saying if you are looking at uh, a chart like this and you're a go trend follower or you're looking for long positions or you're even already, um, you know, enjoying the trend that's in place, you're going to look for a break out of this max go no go squeeze into positive territory um, and if we get that we're most likely going to be looking at a new high in price what's interesting here tyler uh, we talked about volume a little bit earlier in the show but you can see the move higher here this really quick move supported by heavier volume mm -hmm. then when we saw the the price cool off then we saw lighter volume 
And now that price is starting to rally again, volume picking up as well. So that's a very classical um, look at volume where when if you're in a trend, you want to see the new highs on heavy volume and the corrections on low volume. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, um, which is interesting and, and potentially good. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen next, but a max go, no go squeeze. We'll look to see in which way it resolves. And if it resolves to the upside, then we'll look for new highs for the semiconductor ETF socks. Absolutely. And finally, as we close out today's show, let's take a look at NVIDIA because everybody's asking about it anyway. Uh, certainly most of social media is paying attention. Uh, interesting new breakout. Yeah. Uh, and, and if we look at this even on a weekly basis, Alex, yeah. um, it's even uh, it's, it's even clearer to see what uh, <clears throat> last week and this week are doing for us in terms of a breakout above resistance areas. Yeah, I mean, the, the break here of this sort of sideways movement is quite clear. Last week's bar closed significantly higher and there's been follow through so far this week. You can also see that generally speaking, after this really nice run, the oscillator was able to find support around the zero line. We got a couple of GoTrend continuation icons that's propelled us higher here on the weekly chart. But even going back to that daily one, you can see the same sort of thing where we had this sideways movement and it was a break on heavy volume out of a small squeeze that really kicked us on here uh, to new highs. Absolutely. Uh, we hope that you enjoy this show. If you've got any feedback for us, ticker symbols you want us to uh, to cover next week, uh, you can shoot us an email, info at gonogocharts.com or, uh, or leave a comment below. Uh, make sure you check out uh, all of the educational tools on our website, uh, six-part educational series explaining exactly how uh, these charts are constructed and how they can be applied no matter what your time frame is and what asset classes you are trading. Until, uh, until then, we wish you uh, all the best. Please stay warm, take care of each other, and trade them well.